Hey, welcome to Aria. What's next? Uh, today I want to talk about uh, making pens. The essential tools that you're going to need in order to get into the hobby. And on top of the essential tools, I want to get into all the extra crap that you don't need, but it makes the hobby even more fun. The first thing you have to have, of course, you got to have a lathe because you really can't turn a pen without a lathe. I've already gone over this one in previous videos, but this is what I've got for turning pins. I've got a larger lathe over there, but uh, I don't have a pin mandrel for it, and, it, and it's a cheaper lathe. I can't get a pin mandrel. This is what you need to absolutely start out. It's $185 to uh, buy this lathe, and you can get into making pins. I've already got a, a blank set up in here, and when I talk about a pin mandrel, You take your tail stock off, this metal rod right here running across that your blanks are on, this is your pin mandrel. This is what supports your blanks. These are your blanks. What you do is you've got to have bushings, depending on what size of blank you're going to do, you got to have the equivalent bushing for your, uh, for your blank. And you slide your bushing on, slide your blank over, this mandrel should have been cleaned. If you're going to do a double blank, you need an end bushing, center bushing, and another end bushing. Your uh, mandrel is just basically a 7 millimeter friggin' rod, and your slimline kits will go right over top of them, so your bushings are no more than spacers. The bushings get really important when you move into the larger diameter pin kits. You've got uh, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 3 eighths. There's a whole bunch of different types of ones. And you've got to have the, uh, the bushings in between there because the bushing will slide into the brass tubing of your blank and it will keep it centered over top of the pen mandrel. This is your first important purchase you've got to get. It's roughly $185. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. I got mine off of uh, Penn State Industries. So this is the first thing you got to get. So let's move on to the other stuff. All right, so you got the lathe, it's set up. You got your blank in there. Uh, you got no way to turn it. You're going to want a set of lathe tools. This is a set of lathe tools. I think they came from Menards. I'm not 100% certain. Uh, Windsor Design. They're an inexpensive set of lathe tools. If you're first starting out, these things will work just fine. For the most part, this gouge right here is pretty much the only one I ever use for turning uh, pen blanks. If you want to get into some fancier blanks, you can use some of these other chisels in that to put some grooves in that in there. But if you're just doing a nice curved contour pen, this gouge is all you need. One gouge, you can buy one gouge and depending on how expensive you want to go, how fancy you want to go, they're relatively inexpensive. You can probably pick one up for 20 bucks or less. It starts getting dull, a simple little flat metal file and you can sharpen these things. So now you've got your lathe and your lathe tools. Now you want to start turning the pins. You don't have any pin blanks. 
you need to go and buy some pen kits. Right here is a fun line, slim line kit. Uh, I think you pick up 20 of them for like 30, 35 dollars and that is a great entry level pen kit. There are seven millimeter tubes which will slide over top of the pen mandrel. Uh, a lot of times when you buy things like this it will come with bushings as well. I do believe the pen pal comes with seven millimeter bushings. These are super easy to make, super easy to assemble. Uh, they're a great entry level pen kit to get into. Once you've gotten the hang of that, you can get in a little more advanced ones. So I don't know if I've got any in here. I think these are all, yeah, these are all fun line. But I've got, uh, these are eight millimeter kits. Right here is a Chrome Slimline Pro. They're eight millimeter instead of seven millimeter. But with this, I have a Chrome pencil kit and a Chrome pen kit. They look identical and you can make a nice pen and pencil set. Okay, now you've got your lathe, your lathe tools. Uh, you've bought your pen kits. Now you've got to make a blank out of the wood. Now if you want, you can just go and buy these five inch long, three quarter inch by three quarter inch uh, pieces of wood. There's tons and tons of them. You can usually get them for about a buck a piece. This is a paddock. Uh, I think that might be zebra wood. Here's purple heart, Jatoba. You can buy big packages of them for relatively inexpensive amounts of money. I got this big bag right here full of freaking blanks of wood. And if you want, you can just take that one blank, drill it out, put a brass tube in it, and turn it. You'll make a really nice pin. Uh, I like cutting the, the blanks up, blending them in with other materials, you know, so I can make ones like this one right here that's uh, funny. And when I do that, I also like to get a package of veneer so that I can sandwich the veneer in between the uh, wood that I use. It, it puts a nice line down there. It gives a nice, really clean finish. It fills in any sort of gaps you might get from your kerf mark from running it through the saw. Damn flies. You can also go and buy these little cheap, already assembled, pre-drilled things if you don't want to make your own. These are super quick. Uh, slide your tube in with glue and you're ready to go. Uh, once you get your blank and you get it drilled to the appropriate size of your, uh, your brass, you're going to want to buy you know, drill bits to drill out your blanks. Right here, this is a seven millimeter drill bit. This is a brad point bit. So it's got the little tip on here. These are the best ones to get because they, they will self-center really nice. Eight millimeter drill bits. Here's an 11 millimeter drill bit. Once you make your blank and uh, you want to drill it out, and then you got to glue the, uh, the tube in, you want to get epoxy resin. Get five minute epoxy. Epoxy is, five minute epoxy is the best. Don't use one minute. I made that mistake. Uh, it sets up way too fast. You don't have enough working time with it. Uh, talked about bushings earlier. You have to buy bushings for whatever drill bit your kit requires. When you get your kit, if you're looking online for one, look into what drill bit it's going to require to drill the uh, the brass tube. Like this one here is my 11 millimeter drill bit. So I had to buy 11 millimeter bushings. This end, this narrow end, 
will fit inside the 11 millimeter uh, brass tube. The inner diameter is the seven millimeter size of the uh, pen mandrel. So that this will go into the, uh, your blank and it will center it onto the pen mandrel so it'll stay nice and stable. If you're doing a two part blank, like the one that I previously showed you over there that's uh, requiring 11 millimeter, you need a center centering bushing. So it's got a narrow end here, a narrow end here with the wide end in the center. So you can go blank and blank. And you put the bushing on this end, bushing on that end. And then you can turn both of them. So it's just a matter of uh, once you start getting into it and you start buying more and more uh, kits, you're going to have to buy more and more bushing, more and more drill bits. All right, you've turned it. Now you got to sand it. When you're ready to sand it, you need to get sanding packs. This comes in... 150, 240, 320, 400, and 600. If you're doing uh, wooden pins, this is fine. You will run through this. At 600, you'll be done sanding. Once you're done sanding up to 600 on a wooden pin, I like to use Triple E Ultra Shine. This is like a, uh, oh, something like a 1500 grit sandpaper, maybe even more than that. And it puts a really nice little polish on the, uh, the wood. Once you've got the triple E done, wipe it off, make sure all the excess is off of it. And then to put a final shine on there, I use the Shella Wax. There are tons and tons of different finishes and tons and tons of different ways of doing this. This is the way that I like doing it, and it's the most efficient as far as I'm concerned. Uh, three coats of this stuff, and you get a really strong, durable, shiny finish. This is my everyday carry pen. I carry it to work, and I turn wrenches on trucks and trailers every day. And I've been carrying this for probably six months now. And it's beat to shit, but it's still shiny as hell. What you do with this, shake it up good, and then get some good lint-free white cloth. Uh, I don't like using those professional rags over there because they tend to uh, gum up and stick to it. You want a good cloth rag that's lint-free. Cut a chunk off, fold it up a couple of times, Put some of this on there, wipe it all over the blank, and then uh, turn the lathe on at a fairly high speed, and then just hold your hand underneath of it with a decent amount of pressure, because you need it to generate friction. This stuff is a friction polish. It's got to get hot. It's going to get hot, and it's going to it's gonna seal up. It's going to turn hard, and it's going to turn into an actual sealing layer over top of it. Now you got to assemble it. To assemble it, you're going to need an assembly tool. But this is, I think, $35, $38. This is my first assembly jig. And it's just, you put your pin in here, you put your pin blank in here with the components, push it, slides them together, presses them together. You can slide this back and forth, depending on how much length you need. Uh, this is an assembly and disassembly jig at the same time. You can uh, press your pins in, change your distances really easy, but you can also take and loosen these things up, slide this out. You can put your pin in here and there's different ways that you can uh, disassemble a pin if you make a mistake. It also comes with a set of punches and everything. You can clamp your pin down in here and drive pieces out so you don't uh, don't destroy a blank if you spend a lot of time on a blank but you make a mistake when during assembly. So this is far more expensive than this one. I think this runs closer to $80. So it's not really a necessary buy. This is the one that I would probably recommend because it's inexpensive and I've, I've only ever used uh, the disassembly portion of this. I think twice, and honestly, it really wasn't all that necessary. I could have just threw the damn pin away. You want to make your own custom blanks. Uh, all 
I would get a big ass freaking bench vise. You want a six inch bench vise from here. Most pins blanks come at around a five inch blank like that. So you want a vise that can accept this whole thing. So if you're gonna start cutting your blanks and you need to glue them back together and sanding together and making different woods and everything, this thing you can just clamp the living hell out of them. Uh, get one of these so you can start making custom blanks. All right, if you wanna make epoxy resin pins, uh, first thing you're gonna to need to get is going to, of course, be epoxy. Hobby Lobby has this amazing clear cast. You got side A, side B. They mix in equal parts, mix them together, and then you add your, your colors to them. Uh, I've learned uh, if you want to do two different colors, mix a large batch of resin in one cup and then separate it out into two separate cups and then put a color in this one and a color in this one. Because if you don't have your resins mixed exactly the same, they have different densities. And when you put your colors in there, the lower density one is going to settle to the bottom and, and it'll screw up whatever plans you actually have. So always use the same mix of resin for one pin. Once you got your resin and you want to mix it, then you need a blank mold. I got this plastic mold from Lizard Blanks. They're not paying me. They don't even know I'm making this video. Uh, this is an extremely nice mold. They say you don't even need mold release or anything like that in here. The only thing I don't like about this mold is it requires a tremendous amount of resin and most pins that I make doesn't require anywhere remotely to this amount. So you end up wasting a lot of resin with this. Uh, so if you're gonna use one of these things, make some sort of form fitting block that can go in here that'll drop it back so you don't need to use the entire thing. And even though they say you don't you need mold release, I still use mold release. You can get this off of Amazon. Promise. This stuff is kind of expensive. I think this one uh, can is about $18. But mold release just helps the blank come out easier. Another mold that I've got, I got this silicone one off of Amazon, or I think eBay, for like five bucks. And it's like a, an ice cube tray freaking style uh, pen blank mold. This makes much smaller molds. If you're only doing one, the sides are really bendy. So I put painter's tape around it to help hold the sides in. And I also like to keep a blank, some wood blanks on the one side to keep the walls relatively straight. If you don't do that, when you start pouring it, the walls just bow out and you get this weird screwed up freaking looking uh, blank. But this makes a nice manageable pen blank size. Uh, pretty much the size of your three quarter, three quarter by a five or six inch long one. I like this one because it doesn't require a lot of resin to use. All right, so you got your molds, you got your resin, your resin's mixed up, and you're ready to pour. So now you need color. You have called mica powder. This is metallic mica powder. I think I've got like 12 different colors. This is, you know, it's got uh, all the little metallic filaments in there and it'll make a nice, shiny, cool uh, pin. These things will go a long way. It requires very, very, very little pigment. Just take a little scoop out, put it in there, mix it up. If it's not dark enough, take a little tiny scoop out, darken it up. Use very little to start with and just add very little at a time. But these are the metallics. I think I spent uh, about $18 for this pack of them off of Amazon. This pack is the non-metallics. I think this cost me about $30. And there's a whole freaking butt ton of colors in here. 
you can make probably tens of thousands of pins and still not run out of your mica powder because you use almost none of it when you make one pin. There is also liquid dye. This is alumalite liquid dye to go with your alumalite resin. So now you've got your, your blanks, your dyes, your resins ready. You've gone and uh, you've mixed everything together properly. You've got it in your mold. Now you got to let it cure. Uh, resin can't just be left out to cure. There is going to be air pockets trapped in it. If you're doing like a tabletop or whatever and it's relatively thin, the air pockets will start to raise to the surface and you get in there with a torch and it pops the bubbles and whatever. Uh, that doesn't work when you've got a really deep pour. Uh, with this, what you need is this guy right here. This is a Harbor Freight painter's pot. This is designed for you to put freaking paint down into, hook an airline up, charge it full of pressure, and there will be a discharge line that will go out to a paint gun for painting buildings. That's what this is designed for. What you do is you take it apart, you remove the guts out of the inside of it that are meant for picking up the paint, throw that away because you don't need it anymore, plug some holes, and uh, turn it into a pressure pot. Uh, what you need a pressure pot for is you want to take this blank, put it down in here, and put it at approximately 35 to 40 PSI for a few hours, but under the 40 PSI of pressure, it forces all the air bubbles out of it. So when you start turning it, you're not gonna run into a void in there and ruin your blank, or even possibly have your blank blow apart on you. So it's very important if you're gonna do resin that you use a pressure pot. I've seen people that say you don't need it. There's other ways of getting around it, using hot water and blah, blah, blah. This costs a hundred bucks. You set it up with a couple of plugs. Basically you want something that you can just put 40 PSI into, put your blank in there and let it sit for two hours, three hours. You let it sit overnight to fully cure, but it only really needs to be charged for 40 PSI for about two to three hours tops. Cause then the resins, cured enough that no more air pockets gonna come out of there. Shit, I forgot to talk about barrel trimming. Barrel trimming. This tool here, this goes down inside the brass tube after you've glued it into your blank. This will remove all the epoxy resin and that out of the inside of the brass tube. That's what this end does. This end right here grinds the end of the blank down flush with the uh, brass tube. That way you get a nice, perfect perpendicular line from the brass tube to the end of the blank. That way when you put it in the lathe, it fits nice and flush and you can turn it. And when you assemble the pin, the parts all fit perfectly flush to that brass tube. So now your resin pin is now barrel trimmed. It's ready to go in the lathe. Put it in the lathe, turn it just like you would anything else. When you're turning it, uh, your resin is going to send off all these cool little white streamers and it's it's a little more interesting to, to watch than uh, than doing wood. Once it's fully turned, then it's time to sand. Now resin I found, resin's a pain in the ass to sand. It clogs the shit out of your sandpaper. I will go through probably five times as much sandpaper uh, sanding a resin blank and you run it through the 150 up to 600 grit, just like you would the wood. And it, it's time consuming. But you have to freaking pay really, really, really good attention to your sanding. If you get lazy and you decide, oh shit, I'm just gonna move on to the next step because this is taking too long, you're just gonna ruin your, your blank. You have to sand the shit out of it. Uh, Resin is unforgiving when it comes to showing lines, imperfections, so just keep sanding. If you think it's good enough, it's probably not good enough. Just keep sanding. If you can see even the slightest of imperfection in there, sand, sand, sand. And you can't just sand when it's spinning. You have to shut it off and you have to go side to side to remove all the rotational lines out of there. If you can see even the slightest of friggin' rotational line with the current grit that you're on, 
keep sanding because the next grit isn't going to remove it. It is so important to sand the hell out of resin, otherwise you'll never get a nice finish. Once you've gotten to 600 grit and there are no rotation lines left in there and it's looking like a really nice blank, now it's time to move on to sanding pads. These are micro mesh sanding pads. 1500 grit up to 12,000 grit. They're wet sanding pads. They are color coded. What you want to do is start with the bottom one, which is of course going to be the 1500 grit. Take it out, it just slides out, throw it in a bucket of water, let it soak up, and then you start sanding with it. Sand, 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 until there are no rotational lines in there, and then sand some more, and then sand some more. Once that one's done, throw it aside. Grab the next one, soak it in the water, same thing, over and over and over, all the way up till you get to your 12,000 grit. And keep doing that. Once your 12,000 grit is there and there are no lines left, it looking really nice and smooth, found one step plastic polish. Use this with one of those lint free cloth rags. And two, three coats of this stuff. This is, I'm not sure what grit sandpaper this would be considered. But uh, after five, six minutes of polishing with that stuff, you can get a really, really nice shine on your plastic. Shit, I got them backwards. On your epoxy resin blank. You want something that's going to look like glass. If you don't want it to look like glass and you don't care, then go ahead and just... Uh, Don't worry about sanding it so much. But now your pen blank is done, your epoxy resin is done, you've got a really nice finish on it. Take it out. Now it's just time to assemble just like any other pen. And that is all you need. All of this stuff, that's all you need to get into the hobby of uh, making pens. Actually, everything from here over you don't really need to get into the hobby, except for that. That's important. This stuff is extra, but it's still kind of cool. It's fun to it's fun to play with the resin, to make make epoxy resin pins. You know what? Get into making pins. It's enjoyable. Just do it. Go ahead and go to Penn State Industries. Uh, if I figure it out, I'll put a link down below. Check out their link. Uh, order a little pen pal. Get some lathe tools, some pen kits, some blanks. Start making pins. Hit subscribe. Turn on notifications, hit that little like button thing. I'll see you next time.